If you guys saw our last video, you will know that our Alibaba order came in two different packages, and so we were only able to show you guys half of the products last time. So today we're gonna go ahead and show you the rest of what we ordered, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the order process overall while we do that. So I'm here with Michael today, and he's gonna give some of his thoughts on the order as well. So I guess, first of all, how did you feel about the product quality overall? So first off, I think the product quality was really good overall. I mean, it's kind of to be expected when you get things from overseas that you may find some small errors or quirks that, you know, you might not expect, especially as a first time buyer, which in this case we were. Overall, though, I think it totally depended on the products. The plushies themselves seem to have a little bit more errors with the actual stitching, but I wasn't upset with our order whatsoever for being the first time ever trying it. Yeah, I noticed the plush had a lot more loose strings and I guess some of them were, just looked really misshapen, but overall the the fair majority of them were in pretty good condition. There was probably 10 that we pulled out just because they were missing the keychain piece. Um, and those went to our dog, so it's not like they went to waste. Um, and then the keychains, we got some rubber keychains and then of course a bunch of plush keychains. The rubber ones were in really good condition overall, much better than I was expecting. Um, they're about twice the cost of most of the plushies and um, they were all, I mean, they weren't really missing any pieces or anything. They looked pretty accurate to the actual characters and we didn't get any plush in the last video. Um, we're not really disappointed with the quality, but yeah, there's a few little quirks that we weren't expecting. <laughs> For instance, uh, one of the koalas showed up with some longer eyelashes than we were expecting. <laughs> One of the things that I thought was kind of weird was the actual Pokemon keychains because they were just as well made as every other other keychain that we had. Um, the only thing that kind of put them apart in kind of a weird sense, and you wouldn't even notice unless you were more of a Pokemon enthusiast, was that no matter what character you got, they decided to add the label Pikachu to it. So if you didn't know what you were getting, I guess you just assume everything's a Pikachu. Yeah, um, that was a little weird. We considered for a second just pulling those labels off, but we figure, you know, that people can do that themselves if that's something that's important to them. I really liked the little Squishmallow um, keychains. Those were pretty interesting. Um, I saved one of the dear ones for myself. Um. <laughs> I like the Squishmallow keychains, and I really like the emoji keychains because even though some of them were kind of hard to distinguish what they were at first, they showed up kind of better quality than the rest of them. I think the small Pokemon keychains and the emoji keychains were in much better quality because there was much less to work with, and therefore there was a lot less availability for there to be an error because they were so small and overall they were just built really well i think the keychains were my favorite and i would love to see more options for different shoe keychains or character keychains in our orders in the future and eva has a super like if you ever look at her product catalog there are tons and tons and tons of the rubber keychain Gosh, options for all sorts of different things animes mario and different sorts of games and sanrio like anything you could think of there's a rubber keychain for it which is just awesome because they're so well made overall before we got the rest of our order just today we actually looked through her uh her product list to see what kind of things we could look at in the future and it was so expansive that our phones were crashing just trying to go <laughs> through the list and it got worse the further down you went but um one of these days when we open it up on a computer i'm willing to bet you we'll have stuff for the future of our career in vending so we mixed everything from this order together and we ended up with two huge totes of um crane mix and like i said in the last video we spent 550 dollars on this order and not even counting the crane mix that we already had from just other orders from other websites. This is going to be like a $6,500 uh, tote worth of product, mm -hmm. right? Two totes worth of product. It's probably up there in like the $7,500 range with all the other products we had in there. So we're pretty happy with the amount of stock we have on hand right now. Yeah, the value of the inventory that we have is starting to become much higher than the actual amount of machines we can fulfill <laughs> them in. Um, I think eventually what I'd love to see is one tote of the mixes we create per machine that we have that can sustain them. So like mini claws or other various, you know, game machines. Um, overall, I think we have about as much as we need for our kind of short term growth until these next three machines that are on the way through Eva as well get placed. Oh, rainy for those. Oh, it's rainy. Okay. So you can tell this is my first time doing it, but <laughs> uh, we have three machines on the way through rainy. They're going to be mega minis, which a lot of people in the community use. So we're going to try to get those placed. And really with the two, three large totes we have, I don't expect that that's going to be enough to sustain, you know, four to six months. 
if they're in the right locations, but I'm noticing that it's getting easier to kind of pick out what we want to see in good products. I mean, we have everything from mini brands and bazooka candy, so ring pops and juicy drops to Pokemon packs and balls and keychains and plushies, and it's just getting more variety all the time. So I think this is helping us to know now that was our dog being a monster. Um, <laughs> I think it helps us more now to figure out what products do the best so that when we get stuff placed, it's just, you're like dying over here, much like our dog. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really happy. And I think that it's going to even get better and better. And that's before whatever stuff they decide to manufacture next. So, so right now we have two mini claws out and we have three more on the way from Rainy. So we're really excited to make some videos on those claws from Rainy because we've gotten all of our claws before this point from CandyMachines.com. So obviously we're going to get to do a little bit of a comparison there um, and answer some often and very frequently asked questions about those machines. Um, we're going to be able to do a pretty cool, I think, initial review because we decided in our first order to get the spaced out the monster and the robot i believe theme so we're going to have a bunch of different color schemes that we can look at um which is going to help you know kind of distinguish you know what they look like when you get to see the video but we didn't realize that gamer minis were actually an available option when we purchased so from this point forward we'll kind of weigh in what we think about these machines versus the gamer minis but i'd like to see a lot more gamer minis in our future reviews uh -huh, and those are just a wrap too so so if you've seen our channel, we started out with bulk machines and we kind of went through this time of experimentation when it came to figuring out what product worked the best in those. And because we spent so much time doing that, we never really got to do that with our claw machines. And I feel like we were finally hitting a point where we're able to like actually capitalize on whatever the best product is for those machines. So it's a learning curve. It's a little bit of a process, but I'm a lot more happy with our product now than it was like six months ago. Definitely. I am too. The one thing that kind of feels like a little bit of a jab is that we decided to start experimenting with our claws. So now we have all of this excess two inch and one inch capsules and <laughs> gum and candy. So it feels like, you know, we still have so much that we can do with our bulk, but we've just been able to have such a immense amount of fun learning about the claw scene and the kind of products that we can put in there that, you know, I'm hoping eventually we can get a few more bulk machines out because I personally love bulk machines and we have so much excess product to be able to use. Especially with the coin drawers that they added now. It's so much easier to empty them than it even was a year and a half ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we started with like the bare basics for our first machine and now like all of the bulk machines have gone through all of these upgrades and they're just so much easier to empty. So it's becoming a little bit more viable time wise because we used to spend like an hour at each location emptying them and now our newer locations we don't have to spend so much time at stocking and you know emptying. And that's the best part is I think a lot of people when they look into vending they immediately want to jump into the claw machines and they want to jump into snack and drink machines but we were able to to get a really good start going with this business with just bulk. Now that we're past bulk and like onto actual claw machines, I think going forward, we plan to continue to order from Eva. We were really nervous to do it in the beginning, but aside from the few small quirks we've mentioned between this video and the last video, there were very few things to actually be worried about now. Um, of course, we didn't have to deal with customs or any of those other things that people have mentioned. That may change in the future. Seems like it kind of happens at random. So we're kind of doing this under the impression that we may eventually run into more issues later. But we're pretty happy with this order. We're, we plan to continue to order from her and we have that rainy order on the way. So we're going to be really excited to talk about that here soon. Definitely. And I think one thing I want to touch base on is with the thing you mentioned about customs. The main reason that we were so concerned with doing this order had nothing to do with product quality initially. It was about the overseas part. So not only the shipping or the getting lost or the damage, but just the customs, which if you don't know what customs are, I mean, she, um, Callie might be able to explain a little better. It's essentially that your orders can get stopped and they can get searched. And if they are kind of an infringement with that country's, you know, trademarks or what they're allowed to sell and ship, sometimes they can, I don't know if they get repossessed, so to speak, but you may not receive them or they may get heavily delayed. And you can get trade assurance, which basically um, ensures you money wise if something were to go wrong in the shipping. But the main reason we were nervous wasn't the products, but kind of the whole you know, a lot more things can go wrong through its movement to the United States. So we've noticed that that's not something that uh, happened at least this first time. We don't know about the machines yet. And of course, this is something that can happen in the future. 
So the machines, we're, we've only ordered three of those, um, and we'll talk about that in some upcoming videos. We're going to probably close up on this one for now, but um, the machines, we only ordered three, and it wasn't until yesterday that we realized we probably should have ordered between four and six for the best protection packaging-wise. Um, so we may have some broken machines showing up, I guess at least it makes good content. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up, and you know, hopefully we can give you guys a nice insight with future videos about if this is something that you maybe want to try in the future, or if you want to give yourself a little bit of time to research into it more. But overall, I think the risk is about moderate. I shouldn't say that you would expect to get something broken or, you know, not delivered to your address to begin with, or that it'll be perfect. But I think if all works well, it's worth your money, and you're spending a whole lot less to tr try something that, you know, has a little bit more risk factor to it. So if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe for more vending content in the future and let us know below what kind of things you would like to learn about the Alibaba order process. We'll go ahead and see what we can cover in that regard. Thanks for watching. This was what we started with in terms of vending stock. It was just these two totes. And then after this order and adding on a couple more machines this month, we also have this. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, over. Let's go. Baby. Ooh, baby. Uh, one of these didn't have the actual keychain attached to it. We'll figure it out when we cross it. Well, what is your deal? I think she really is wondering why there's so many toys that she is not a part of. Okay, Ryobi, you gotta stop this. Miss Rai. A token of my appreciation. Yeah. Ryobi! I think we have a banner selection. This is everything we still have left to inspect, and this is everything that has passed the test. And Mrs. Ryobi back there has all the duds. Yeah? Yeah, you like the duds. <laughs>